Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome back to another episode of our Tropical Painting Together. Now this time we're going to do an extra special episode. We're going to spend the entire time just highlighting. I think you'll really enjoy it. Let's get started. We'll start off today here with a little detail round and a beautiful soft yellow color. As you can see, my palette's a little bit on the dirty side just because I've been painting earlier today. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start with this really bright color, and here and there I'm going to pick out little areas and I'm just going to enhance them. First off, just because why not? Let's hit the eye of the wave here. Watch this, just touch it. Now, obviously painting's dry. We painted it last week. It's pretty much totally dry and that's good. I'm just gonna touch it, see this, touch it. So you gotta use a little bit of a different stroke. This is not, not wet oil painting. This is wet over dry and it's just a little different. So there you go. All right, you can blend. I'm just gonna set everything down, set the color on the canvas, and then I'm gonna, if I need to feather it later, I totally can do that. Okay, a little more paint. Touch a little bit of red into that to make a soft pink. I can put my hand on the canvas until it starts getting highlight everywhere. And I'm just gonna tint these rocks, set them off. You're gonna see a lot of the tooth of the canvas. Let me paint wet, when we paint with wet oils, you can still see the tooth, but we're probably going to see it a little bit more today because it is dry. It won't mix at all. Good. And like I said, I can blend it. I can smudge it on the canvas later. Good. Using all sorts of beautiful soft colors. Got to imagine that sunlight filtering through there. Now, I can't show you every single little bit in detail how to do all this. It's just way too much. So. We have that highlighting technique DVD that would just, if you're interested in kind of learning how to highlight more advanced techniques with highlighting and stuff, give that DVD a try. I think you'll find that it's pretty useful there. But I do hope you pick up some information from this. There, I just can't, I can't spend an hour showing you here today. There. Good, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now at the end, make sure you guys get to the end of this video because we've got some voting. I can't wait to see what you guys want to do. We're getting close to done. I mean, you know, there's still quite a bit we want to do to this painting, but we're getting there. I'm going to tint these rocks here. Remember, this is more of a backlit situation here. Let's just wait on that. Let me come over here. All right, I'm going to pick out a few more highlights and I'll come right back with you. We'll do something different. Now I'm going to load up my little three quarter brush here with some very light yellow, yellow and white. And as you can see, I just did a touch more work to the rocks, but really not much more. All right, right over here. I'm gonna, let's just think about this for a second. Maybe right in, I don't wanna do it right at the horizon, maybe right up here. There we go. Maybe I do wanna do it at the horizon, I don't know, we'll see. I just need to, gotta start somewhere. There. What I'm gonna do is I'm just enhancing the light in the sky. A little bit more, yeah, let's do it right here at the horizon, why not? You gotta just sometimes figure it out as you go along. And if you've ever confused or don't know exactly where you're going, don't worry about it because it happens to me too. There. Now, I mentioned this before in other episodes, but if you're, if you're watching this after the voting's closed, go ahead and watch the whole thing. Watch all the videos in order because it'll give you a really great idea of how paintings are created and it's also just kind of fun to see, right? There you go. Also be sure to share and like these videos so that a lot of other people can see them too. I see how I'm drifting some of this bright color across the sky, letting it fade out. See that? You can do that. All right. Oh, yeah. Looks weird now. Don't worry. We'll blend it. Okay. I am going to leave it weird for a second. So try to ignore it. <laughs> this is too much fun. Okay. Take a little bit of yellow and white. Touch of this, touch of this color here that had some red in it. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing brush strokes like this. Now, a lot of people seem to think and I used to as well, that, you know, painting an oil painting and one day was somehow, you know, a challenge or it was more difficult to do it that way, but you did it because of the convenience and you know what? I don't know. I don't really think that's true because I mean, it's, if this was wet, this would already be blended and we'd be done. <laughs> but I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to do a lot of extra work here to get this to blend. So, you know, maybe you can make it just a little brighter and maybe it doesn't get so muddy, but it sure is a lot of extra effort. So I don't know. I kind of think that, I kind of think that doing it all in one day is easier personally. There. 
So see how I'm working this in? Good. See how we're kind of trying to develop the lighting here? Gotta, gotta work on that lighting. Oh, what a big mess. <laughs> we're gonna have to fix all this. Okay. All right, let's stop right there. I need a little extra brightness right in this wave. Touch it, good. Okay, stop right there. Grab a little, little more here. There we go. I highlight the top of that wave. There, I like it. Good. I'm gonna go to a slightly darker color. Right over here to some blue I had on the palette already. Use this in the shadows. All right, I'm gonna finish up here. I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just touch a little bit of highlight here to these palm trees. I'm gonna do a broken highlight because their bark is pretty rough and that'll indicate that a little bit. There we go. As they get away from the light, go obviously go slightly darker. Good. As they go into the light, <laughs> obviously get slightly brighter. There. Don't do it to everything, just, you know, here and there. And then, especially on these back ones, just look, just toss a little color. Why go crazy? Just toss a little color on them. Make them feel like they're being sparkled by the sun. Over here, maybe a little more feeling of, you know, branches. But feel free not to go overboard. <laughs> there we go. It's just not the point of the painting. These are just there. If people look at our painting and the first thing they say is, oh, look at those nice palm trees, we did something wrong. <laughs> That's what I always tell my students when we're painting in a class. There. Because you can only put detail on so many things. You can't do everything. If you do, it just goes kind of crazy. There, I love that color. I'm gonna go with more subtle. More subtle as we go away from this area. See that? Just splashes of color. Beautiful. Using similar colors here, I'm going to block in our rocks using sharp angles. There. See that? Don't need a whole lot, especially as we go out. I don't want there to be as much. There. Ooh, a little green snuck into that. I kind of think that's cool. It's okay. There. Pretty simple. <laughs> wow, we can do those pretty quick, right? There's no reason to spend a whole lot of time on them. Now I have a three quarter inch brush here that I have just a tiny, tiny bit of thin oil in. It's not totally dry like normal. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and blend all of these nasty hard lines together. And because we're not working on a wet background, this is still a dry background, it's just a little bit more difficult than normal. So I've got this brush with oil in it, as odd as that's, you know, it's not much oil. It's not that much, it's just a touch. In fact, I could even take a little bit more out. There, and I'm using this lightly, just hit it once or twice to blend. See how you can blend these harder areas together? Now, if this painting was wet, you wouldn't have as much of these hard lines. You still have the holes of the canvas sometimes show through, but you wouldn't have these hard edges everywhere so much. So that's just something to take into consideration. There is a big advantage of painting wet there. But since we're not, that's okay. Let me show you how to do it this way. If you're doing this painting in acrylic, and I'm sure some of you guys probably are, <laughs> if you're, or if you're doing anything in acrylic, don't, don't, let, don't let it sit. If you, you gotta blend out those hard edges quick. The oils, we can let it sit. It's not going anywhere. Good. Okay, so, ooh, that works, there. Experiment, there we go, <laughs> fun. A little bit there, I don't wanna ruin that beautiful dark under that wave though, that is so cool. I can always put it back in. Okay, up here, just grab these and pull them. Now I'm gonna use the three quarter brush here to drop on a tiny bit of highlight to the, to the splash of this wave. Now, this is actually what I designed the three quarter brush to do originally is seascape stuff. So here's a little bit of our pink. Just decided to change the color a little. And yeah, right back here. Wow, that really was a little, maybe it's too subtle, I don't know. So I'm just touching like this. 
blending it back. Now, again, if this was wet, it would have blended automatically backward, but it's not. So I will blend it the same way with the brush with a little bit of oil in it. So nothing new. Same exact stuff over and over again. There. Good. Ah, we got to figure this out, though. Does it come down like that with the highlight? Yeah, I guess it should. And maybe it kind of goes into a bit of a shadow. I see you got to think about how the light would would interact with the different elements in your painting. You can't just sort of, you can't throw light everywhere. That's a good way to, good way to get a painting that doesn't really seem effective. So, there, throw a little extra light back there. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Good. All right, warm and cool colors. When you're doing a seascape, warm and cool colors are always effective. So we've got our warm, let's get our cool, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, kind of a gray. Oh, there's a better blue right there. Let's sneak that back in here as well. Lighten it up a little. Warm against cool. And again, if you need help with oceans or anything like that, I've got DVDs that'll help you. They're on the website. There. And again, I'm going to have to blend all this together because this is there, because that's pretty, pretty dry. Good. Now, the last detail I want to show you how to do today is just this transparent foam. I've just spent the last couple of seconds here doing some of it, and I've just got a, a little detail round. And, and I'm, see that? I just brush it over like this very lightly. There's a little bit of oil down because I had the, the oily brush out <laughs> blending. Good. So let's see how that, I don't know, it's, I know it's subtle, but isn't it cool? Just get a little bit of this, it looks like, you know, it was windy maybe, or not even, doesn't even, maybe it's not windy. Maybe it's just, you know, it's crashing and splashing back, but just, this is the transparent water, the mist that you would see because it's hitting and being thrown backwards. That's cool. And there's always ways to explain everything in painting, pretty much. There, maybe a little bit of this transparent rushing back over here, but not so much. Okay, good. A couple of, couple of little foam lines down in here. Same color. That just creates a little more detail. We can work on the detail later. This isn't so much a detail episode as it is a highlight. You notice, really, the details aren't so much there yet. The rocks need more detail, stuff like that, you know? I haven't really done that. I'm just worried about the lighting, not the detail. And they're different. People sometimes think they're the same. They're actually a little bit different. There. So I'm really developing the light in the painting. Then I'll make it crisp and sharp and, and detailed where it needs to be. <laughs> there we go. All right. I think it's about time to start voting. All right, now I want you to see the three options that we have for really pretty much the end of this painting. This will finish it out. So we could finish it by placing some beautiful palm trees, some large ones here on the right-hand side of the painting. Almost frames the, in the little cove, and I think that looks nice. Or we can go very simple with just a, a distant flock of birds and leave the painting pretty much as it is. Just add a little more detail and highlight to the rocks and the wave. Or of course, we can also add some beautiful sun rays, and this will be done very easily with a transparent glaze that might add just a little bit of extra impact to the painting. But now it's your turn to vote, and the choice is totally up to you. All right, well, that's all the work we're going to do for this little painting today. Next week, we'll pick up right where we left off. Don't forget to vote for how you want this painting to turn out. Thanks for watching.